Today we're going to be talking about a subgenre of horror that's really popular on like the literary side of the scene, but doesn't get adapted a whole lot into horror film. So down in the comments, I want you to tell me your favorite cosmic horror movie. Hi there, I'm Adam Caesar. This is another episode of Project Black T-Shirt, the review show where we take a movie every week and then we pair it with a book that you might enjoy reading if you like that movie. Be sure to check out my other videos and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so you don't miss one. It's hard to believe that I've been making videos for this long, but about two years ago now I made a video that was a list of horror novels or horror books that should be adapted into horror movies. It was pretty popular, it's definitely my most popular video, and one of the things I talked about in there uh, is how the literary works of Laird Barron, author Laird Barron, are ripe for cinematic adaptation. I talked about how like they're, they're, a lot of them are interconnected and he's got his own mythos going on and how they could be this kind of huge uh, panoply of, of interrelated films if you, if you kind of made the movies right. Uh, and now, two years later, not to call myself a trendsetter, uh, but we're gonna be talking about They Remain, uh, a film by Philip Gallat that is an adaptation of the Lair Baron uh, long short story novelette 30, which appeared in Occultation. So They Remain stars Rebecca Henderson and William Jackson Harper, who you may know if you watch TV, if you watch the show The Good Place, he plays Cheaty, uh, the kind of neurotic uh, straight man in The Good Place. Uh, he is, here he is playing about as far away from that character as you can get. And it's a movie that's gonna, that's gonna have you see this, uh, this actor, this performer in a, in a whole new light. They Remain is about uh, two researchers who are dropped in a remote location. I think it's supposed to be at least in the story, I think it is, uh, the Pacific Northwest, the forests of the Pacific Northwest. But the movie's actually shot in upstate New York and it looks uh, beautiful, the scenery's beautiful. We'll talk a little bit about that later. But they're dropped in this remote location and they're doing this kind of esoteric, pseudoscientific research. It's not exactly clear what they're doing, uh, but they're researching a site where there's been this kind of cult who's been living there and there's been this Charlie Manson type massacre with this cult family. They're worshiping something that is 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 in out in these woods, some kind of cosmic force. And as the two of these researchers are living there for, they're supposed to be there for like months. And as the the days and the weeks pass on, they are starting to get more paranoid of their surroundings. They're starting to get more paranoid of each other. And it's kind of this little tight bottle story where you're never quite sure what is a hundred percent going on. But there are these very cool visuals. Um, very cool uh, character moments and, and, and background delivered through these, these monologues. And I will say, as I kind of delve into the review portion here, this is not the movie for everyone. This is not a movie that if you have at all have a problem with ambiguity, um, metered pacing, anything that's like oblique or doesn't kind of spoon feed you its story, anything that is a little bit uh, stylized where people People, uh, the performances are great, but people do not talk like people talk in real life. They talk like they talk pretty much in a Laird Barron story, which is, is one of the film's strengths. So if any of those kind of red flags are like, ah, this might not be the movie for me, you actually may be right, but it is the movie for me. So it's, it's a movie with a very small cast, like three people, um, and one of them is the helicopter pilot and he kind of comes in and out. Very small cast. A uh, very smaller budget, but it doesn't feel like a movie with a small budget. Like I'm just assuming it has a small budget because it has production value kind of out the wazoo, and the cinematography is great, and the locations that they found are are really incredible and 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 kind of otherworldly. Especially because there's no there's no like special effect to it. It's just uh, and that's that's part of the themes and part of the text of the movie is that you know that nature is this kind of insane unnotable kaleidoscope where you know we have ants down here and wow look how complex their society and their their you know quote unquote culture is their family is um and then we have humans right and then as is as cosmic horror is want to do uh there is clearly something beyond humanity something that that makes that kind of scale of bigger and bigger and bigger um scary and unknowable and as in, as in Laird Barron's work, as in Lovecraft, as in all these cosmic horror guys and gals, 
that's what this story is dealing with, but not in a not in a creaturey way, which is the way that uh, these stories usually get told and these stories usually get presented, especially in film. You know, the works of Stuart Gordon, In the Mouth of Madness, these, these are, you know, those are cosmic horror films, but they're all kind of creature films. The Void, uh, they, they're, all, they're all kind of, they take the unknowable and then they like get Rob Bottin to do effects and that's, you know, that, then it becomes knowable. This is not that kind of movie, which is something that I really, really appreciate and really, really like. So as an adaptation of Larry Barron's work, uh, this, is, this, this movie is a home run. It's, 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 it's small and intimate, but still has that big cosmic feel to it. And it's, it, I really, really, really recommend that you check it out when it either plays near you or when it's rentable or whatever on VOD. It's a movie you should really track down and, uh, and, 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 and give your time and attention and money to. What I do wanna say is that I never got a chance to, I recommended the book, Annihilation, I never really got a chance to talk about Alex Garland's uh, film adaptation. As I was sitting watching uh, They Remain, it reminded me so much of Annihilation, uh, just on a, on a broader thematic level, and then on like a very you know literal, a group of researchers going into a dangerous and unknowable place to investigate it. Uh, they're very similar movies in that respect. One is clearly a, a bigger, a uh, movie with bigger stars and bigger action set pieces, but they're both fantastic and they're both they would make a great double feature uh, If you really wanted to like get a nosebleed at the end of a double feature there there they are mind melters of movies and they would play really really well together So I I live in the US so I went and saw Annihilation in a theater Which is a shame that the rest of the the world doesn't get to do that, but Annihilation is on Netflix um, If you're in Canada out anywhere anywhere basically that's not the US uh, U.S. you kind of missed out, but you should get the Blu-ray. And if you if you slept on that movie, it's a real shame because it's great in the movie theaters. Um, but they're both movies that have you know that that theme of 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 nature being both beautiful and dangerous and uh, some form of ecology is some kind of form of 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 unknowable and unstudiable hierarchy, even though we try to compartmentalize and talk about it and as if it's classifiable. They're, they're both movies that, that, that subscribe to that. And I will say that there's going to be a little bit of pushback for They Remain. People are gonna be like, this isn't, this isn't a horror movie or this is you know, like a character piece or this is a sci-fi movie or this is, you know, I'm not sure what this is. This is a, you know, an indie drama. It, it is, a, I will fight you. It is a horror movie. That's a, this, is a, this is a horror picture, especially um, and not to spoil anything, but the, the last four minutes or so of this movie are, I found incredibly scary. And even kind of knowing where things are going, uh, a marvelous little picture and something that you really, really, really need to seek out. Uh, don't wait for it to kind of be dumped on whatever streaming service. Like, go see this movie and support it. So for this week's book recommendation, I'm going to go really on the nose. I'm going to recommend a Layard Baron book. But... I'm not going to recommend his short story, which I've talked about before. I'm going to say The Croning, which is a book that works a whole lot better if you've read some of the author's work, if you read some other Baron, if especially the short stories, which I recommend kind of just reading them publication order. Go from the Imago sequence, occultation, the beautiful thing that awaits us all, um, and just go from there. The Croning is a kind of cosmic fairy tale if that makes sense it's got it's got rumple stilt skin in it it has it has these kind of fairy tale elements to it it is but it's really like a book that's that's wide in its scope and kind of uh, beguiling in its construction uh, it's a it's a book that as i even get more and more distance from it i think about it a lot and i and it's one of those books that that coming from loving his short stories that i feel like when i first read it i kind of was I, it's not not underwhelmed, but I, I just didn't I couldn't quite digest it But the more and more I think about it the more I'm like one day I'm gonna go back and read that Which is gonna be harder because Baron has a new book coming out called blood standard. That's a um, He's kind of pivoting over to street crime fiction, but that's very much an anticipated read for me That's that's out next month one last thing for book recommendations and this is turning heel completely this is this is uh, about as far from of subtle creeping cosmic hard dread as you can get uh, but I wrote a Power Rangers story for Boom Studios' uh, ongoing pa Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comic book. 
So if you are at all a Power Rangers fan or if you are at all a comic fan, uh, I highly recommend picking up the annual that comes out. Uh, let's see, I'm filming this uh, a week before it comes out. So it comes out April 25th. Check your local comic stores. It's the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 2018 annual and how that kind of shakes out. But I'm really proud of the story. It has beautiful art. If you read comics but you haven't been reading the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comic, uh, lead writer Kyle Higgins has been doing some incredible work kind of honoring the original series but taking it in a new, uh, a new direction. But it's a really good book. It's a really good comic book. And I'm very happy to be a part of it. All right, if you like this video, please hit like. If you really like this video, please subscribe and hit that little bell icon. Check out my other videos. If you want to find out more about me and my work, my novels, short stories, one of which Baron blurbs, and I'm never going to shut up about that. Uh, but if you want to find out more about that, I have a link down in the description to my website where you can get on my mailing list, get a free short story, uh, novel samples, stuff like that. Uh, very much appreciated. I'm Adam Caesar, and I'll see you next week.